Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, from our last video, we left off with the bench upright, basically lacking its top. Um, I did want to backtrack just a little bit though to something that you may or may not have noticed from the last video. Uh, it's a little unorthodox, but because I get, do get a little bit of water in my basement, not really any flooding or anything, but um, you know, just a little bit of wetness on the floor, uh, I wanted to protect the, the legs of the bench a little bit. So I had some extra pressure treated uh, lumber kicking around. So I basically sliced that piece uh, three quarter inches thick and placed them on the bottom of the leg such as the such that the face grain would be downward towards the floor and then um, secured it to the base with screws and then I used some exterior grade caulking to to seal up those screw holes and that that's to keep any moisture that may come in from wicking up into the the end grain of the bench legs Okay, so at this point, the workbench is upside down on top of a couple of sawhorses, um, and that's to be able to attach everything from the underneath side. Um, I used some more of those one and a half inch uh, square cleats that were mentioned in the last video, and I used those to connect the top to the uh, traversing pieces of the leg assembly. Um, plus, I used a couple more in between the leg assemblies to um, add some more rigidity to the top and also to. Um, add some support for the gap stop which we'll uh, get into a little bit later. Uh, once the top was then secured to the bench, um, I then took some more of the 2x12 material and then I, with some glue and screws, doubled up the sections of the top because I wanted a good 3 inches or so thickness of the top so that way um, hole fasts that I would be using with the dog holes uh, would be that much more effective. Okay, for the face vise, I went with a Wilton 7-inch um, metal jaw vise. Uh, the installation was pretty easy. As you can see from the picture, it does have a removable, pivotable jaw, which I did remove because um, I was planning on doing my own chop for the vise. Um, I can always remove the chop and put the pivoting jaw back on if I ever need it, although I don't really foresee an immediate use for that. Um, one of the things I liked about this vise was that it had a single screw going through the middle that's covered to keep the sawdust out with no extra guide bars, which I thought was a nice feature to be able to clamp pieces vertically without having uh, guide bars get in your way. So I then inserted it into um, the underneath side of the, the bench and marked out where I needed to cut the hole for the screw. Uh, went ahead and did that, and then uh, it was just an easy task to just then insert that and re reattach the plate that um, secures the screw to the back end of the vise. Okay, so now with everything together, it was now time to get this now rather heavy bench um, down onto its side so I can work on the on the uh, dog holes for the apron side. So my son was a great help with this. He helped uh, maneuver some milk crates into place as I held the bench so we could do this in stages. So as you can see, I did in uh, a couple stages to get it down to a lower level and then flipped it down onto its side to begin work on the apron. For the dog holes in the apron and the bench top, I used a method using a plunge router and uh, a spiral upcut bit from Osrun. Um, I saw this method used by Glenn Huey of Popular Woodworking in a video some time back. Um, so what I did was I took a piece of MDF and I made it basically into a router base plate that gave me a lot of surface area that I could use to clamp the router in any position. Um, fairly easily. Now you'll notice that the Osrin upcut spiral bit, uh, I picked that up from Lee Valley, it doesn't have a centering point on it. So what I did was for each of the holes I marked where the center would be and I used a, a brad point drill bit and just tapped on it slightly just to make a little bit of an indent right at the center point. I then used a three quarter inch force in a bit and just started drilling the hole just enough to give a bit of a wall if you will to then use that I could register the Osrin bit against. So once I plunged all the holes, they didn't go all the way through, but there was enough there where it went down probably a good couple inches. In the last inch or so, I finished off with a spade bit uh, using a sacrificial backer board to um, prevent any tear out. But before doing the dog holes on the top though, um, I did go ahead and flatten the bench top and I used the router for this as well. Um, basically I set up two parallel rails, um, you know, basically two by sixes that were jointed to be uh, straight and parallel to each other on either side of the bench. 
Um, this is a method I found on the Wood Whisperer site. And built a jig using uh, some plywood and uh, basically it's a trough that the, that the router rides in. And you just pass it back and forth over the bench top once your rails are parallel. And once that is done, you have a flat bench top. Okay, for the end vise, um, and actually I was considering not going with an end vise since I was going to use the, the gap stop and a couple dog holes towards the face vise end of the bench as a planing stop. But I figured coming from a bench without any vices, it might be a good idea to put an end vise in just to give me more options. So for that I went with the Veritas inset vise, and that was pretty easy to install. Basically just rot out the recess, screw it down into place, and once that was in place, that was the... Um, indicator of how far in I would place my dog holes on the bench top. So once those were done, now it was time to basically now apply the finish to the bench. So for that I used boiled linseed oil. Now boiled linseed oil does take a little while to cure, so what to do while waiting for that to happen? Well, it was in May, so we went ahead and planted a garden. Now this is the first time we tried a garden, so we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, once the boil linseed oil was cured, I actually went ahead and went and made the gap stop and the chop for the uh, front vise. Now, by this time, I was running out of dug fur, so um, I had some ash in the shop that was actually uh, free. It was actually given to me by a coworker friend of mine that um, was moving and wanted to offload some wood so he wouldn't have to move, move so much. So, uh, me and another friend um, picked that wood up and. So some of that ash went into making the gap stop and the chop for the front vise. And with that, the bench is now a final product. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.